So right now we just pulled off what they call the cap sheet. So it's like an extra protective film on top that gets us ready. So when we're going up next to the, the boat to lay it out, we don't have to pull that off. So it has to be done before. And now we're rolling it back up so we can get ready to do our install inch by inch. That's what you have to do. Foot by foot maybe, let's say, right? Foot by foot. Amateur level here. Amateur, trying to figure out how to roll a roll really nicely. Getting that forearm workout, son. In preparing to do the two lengths of this whole side, you always wanna make sure that you roll out your film and pull the cap sheet. It's gonna take multiple people, so make sure you have some helpers. And in here, we've utilized our tables to kind of give us a bridge to hold that film up instead of on the floor. You never want to let it touch the floor. And of course, once we're done with this, you just want to make sure the roll is, you know, as tight as you can get it so you can handle it well when you're holding it and put some tape on it, make sure it can't unspool. And then we're going to go back to actually cleaning the side one more time right before the application. Okay, so a couple things when we're on set here doing a DNA film install, you're going to be really needing only a few things. So. First and foremost, your squeegees. Make sure you have them laying out because you're gonna, guaranteed you're gonna lose one in your pocket. It happens every time, so have everything out. You wanna have multiple razors here. Remember, we're gonna be snapping razors as we go. And so because of that, we put a little tape right onto this magnet. That way they go right onto the magnet and they're also bound, stuck to the tape, just like that. So it keeps everything tidy so we can just go right to the can later wrap them all up, then it doesn't cut through the trash bag. Also, we're gonna be changing and adding to the tank as we go. So you're gonna to wanna to have your slip solution and a syringe just so you can measure. You have your two lengths, of course, whatever project you're working on, make sure you have all of your film pre-cut, basically ready to go. So we have our two lengths for this whole side. And then of course, your background equipment. Extra bottles for the lock. We call this lock because basically it flushes out the slip solution. So that'll be there. That's just water, okay? Guys, just clean water. The next thing is gonna be have all your backup stuff, more squeegees, more knives, tapes, measuring. You wanna have all these things ready to go. And of course, a squeegee blade to do your preliminary clean. Really important that we use an eraser and our zero spray to clean and remove wax, compound, anything like that. That way it's super clean and so we can bond that film to the surface. So that's the basics of what you should have on your job site for an MPF install. So another thing we're gonna do is put on our end barrier. This is where our line's gonna be cut in order that we have a nice straight line and also we know where we're going. We're gonna make it exactly the other side. So we'll cut right up to this edge. The film will of course be squeegeed right out to this edge. And then when we're done, we're gonna cut that so we have a nice straight line. How hard was it to see the water line that we made with our Hull Pro or even Hull Max? When you're, when you're doing the final trim, you're, you're trying to- Maybe on the darker or on the lighter colors, it might be harder. The dark color was easy, pretty cheap. Dark color is hard. So on light colors, it might be good to match our line for our bottom coating in order that we have a guiding line basically to do our final trim there. So that's something to think about when you're getting ready for your job. So you have to really make sure you're laying it out so it goes super smooth. It's gonna be a lot more prep and then you're just sitting here squeegeeing, two guys just making sure that you're putting the film down nicely. So get all your prep work, get all your tools, and all your techniques that you're gonna use up in the front. Make sure you know what they are and how you're gonna execute on them. So another thing at DNA that we really strive to do is keep all the gear that usually comes with these boats very organized. We don't wanna get the calls later and say, hey, where is my strut rod or my go-go gadget or anything, anything, fishing poles, where are my gloves? So. We will actually unload, organized. We have pictures that we take first. We do a little video catalog so we can see where everything's oriented. And then of course we load from front to back and we stage that on our tables like that as well. And it is important because believe it or not, we get calls from new boat owners and they say, hey, I don't have a couple sandbags. And we find out that they are actually never provided to them. So we're very organized with what we do. We document and also organize our tables, make sure they're labeled so everything goes right back in where it came from. All right, so we're just finishing off filling the tank with the compressed air. We're gonna set this at about 95 or 100 if you want. The important thing is the slip solution. For different scenarios, I've noticed that it's better to have a little bit less slip 
something like maybe the outboards where you want to tack down a lot quicker, but you still want it to work for your favor. On the whole sides where you have big long runs where you got to push a lot of water out. So we're going to fluctuate 25, 30 for engine outboards as far as the mixture, uh, and that's milliliters with the little syringe that we're going to pull from the slip solution, the shampoo bottle. And then of course, we're going to do the 40 probably on the whole sides. That way we're able to evacuate water easily and pick up, put down if we have to. That's really the most important thing. So once we have really completed an entire cleaning of the hull side, we're gonna go ahead and we had our film that we had to get through. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna also clean it again just to make sure that there's nothing like laying on it just from the air blown around. Now, you can use a regular squeegee and just go with the idea that you're gonna pull down. When you spray, we're gonna make sure that we always go from the top down and you really wanna pay close attention to like even right here, I can feel a little bit of something that just came off. Pay close attention to the through holes, okay? Because when you're spraying, it's gonna drain back out. And if you put the film up and there's anything deep in here that's gonna roll back out, it's gonna end up in the film. So it's always good to make sure that you double check those, any type of emblems or badges, this one's gonna stay on for this install. But ultimately, when you're doing this, go around and feel with your hands as well. This is very much the reason why we magic erase because it's so good at cleaning. And that's one of the things that we need to make sure of is cleaning around all the edges and borders of different things. As we're unrolling this, we're gonna make sure that we stay kind of close to the boat. We're gonna wanna pull this off first while we have the chance since we have a table sitting here. Getting this edge is, you can always just put a little crease in it like that and then flip it back the other way and it'll make getting the edge a lot easier. Pulling this off is gonna be one of the things that you really gotta be all hands on deck for, so we wanna spray this as we're going. Here we go. Pull, pull, pull taut, yeah, pull taut. Keep that paper. Okay, there we go, all right. So now we're gonna take this over to the boat. Now we're getting into it. All right, right there is gonna be probably good for the start. Now we're gonna, when you're ready, remember the bottom, yep, good. Walk through, here we go. We're gonna lift up a little. There we go, and I'm gonna go say forward, please. It is nice to be able to cut in this edge and not worry too much when you're trimming rub rails. If you have this kind, it's easy to run that line. And just make sure that you're pushing this in so you're, you're, you're tight to it, because if you cut up here and it's hanging, Chances are you might short it a little bit. So always push in, make sure the film is where it needs to be. I think we're good to get going here and work with that. Now, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this. This is a shame. When you look at this, you wanna be firm with this as well, making sure that you're getting it conformed to the surface and also pushing the water out good. There might be a little bit of a preliminary trim that has to happen here just to kind of get this to lay out nice. Okay, so we got our edge. So as soon as you get to this point where you have a pinch like this, so you got this, this roll in here, so we're gonna trim this a little bit just to relieve it. See what happens is you gotta trim a lot here. I'm gonna pull this. Go ahead and trim right above that. So we're gonna trim right against the squeegee. Yep. Okay, and that gets us a little more workability here. We'll probably put, get rid of some of this here too. Yeah, like right here. There we go. Okay. All right, and that'll help us just let this thing relax a little bit, okay? All right, so we're about halfway and we're basically just trying to get to the part where we're starting to get that flare. We'll lift every now and then, and then try to get this to lay down just like that naturally where it kind of sucks to the surface. Now we've had this out and squeegeed a bunch, and now we kind of did a little stretch on it as we're doing this. We're stretching and kind of pushing it in, and of course getting it to where we want. 
every few feet, maybe three feet, we'll lift up again and let it relax back into the surface. That way it's really on there naturally, as close as possible, I should say. The film will get a better long-term projection then. Oh, what's that? What did we just do to this? Well, let me just tell you, now that we're finished with this 31C Hunter, badass build by the way, but nobody without this technology could have taken the finish where we just took it. The Yacht Armor MPF is fantastical to me. The gloss level is absolutely gorgeous. It is matched up on the waterline you can't see, but there is a waterline on there that we've matched up with the Armist Hull Pro right up to it. So now we have a glass epoxy on the whole entire bottom and we build it up from there with the Yacht Armor MPF, which is a ceramic infused seven mil film. And then we also have the rest of the vessel all done up in the Ultra package, which includes three or four different ceramic coatings, all built on performance and what we need. And that's been over a long period of time. Guys, over a decade I've done this and been able to match the right products. And I've seen every different make and model of coatings out there. And we've got one that we've been running for the last four, almost five years now that we know exactly what it does. So we matched all that together and then we put some extra protection on the screens, a little anti-glare and all in all, we have this now. One hell of a badass build with all of the latest appearance protection products.